Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, family service. It's great to have you with us today. I can just about make you out over there in a the distance through the camera lens. Uh, but no, um, we're going to carry on with our virtual format, um, but it's great for those who have chosen to join us now. And for those of you who will watch it either later today on a Sunday or at some point in the week, then I uh, hope you enjoy this time uh, together. So we're actually going to start by watching this little video that hopefully will help us uh, get us in a mood and uh, remember why we're here and how God rules over all. So let's just watch this uh, short little video before we carry on with our service. you enjoyed this uh, video um, it's a real encouragement it kind of really gets us into uh, this desire to remember who God is and how he rules overall no, no matter the circumstances whether it's now and what's going on now but you could be you could be in Syria and feel sometimes a bit hopeless or you can be in any situation in history but God rules overall it doesn't matter what goes on around us he doesn't change and he's there for us so Hopefully that's really sort of lifted your spirits up and got you ready to sing our first chorus, which is Shine, Jesus Shine, and uh, over to the worship band to sing this song together.
Welcome back. Great to sing and worship together and I hope you enjoyed this song. Let's just now have a time of prayer. Uh, commit this uh, time into our Lord's hands, but we've also got a few people to pray for. Um, there's, uh, there's been a few um, grieving families over the last few weeks. Particularly this week, we'd like to pray for uh, Dave's family with the passing of his dad. Pray particularly for Margaret, his mother, but of course for Dave and the rest of the family as, uh, as they go through this difficult period. Uh, and we also want to think about those for whom uh, a passing away has been quite recent. Think particularly about Ruth's family uh, with her uncle uh, and the rest of the family still um, processing and grieving in this time. Uh, and also Helen, Helen Buttery, uh, Reuben's, Reuben's wife, uh, obviously her dad passing away as well. So time of grief for a lot of families at the moment. So we'll just, we'll just pray for those as well, but commit this time into our Lord's hands, into the hands of our Lord as well. So let, let, let's just pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are here amongst us uh, and you are not bound by physical presence, by where we are. You are with each one of us, wherever we are. And we thank you for that, for that amazing nature that you are. And we just cannot grasp in so many ways. Lord, and we just want to turn to you in this next hour and use this time to worship you, to give you thanks, no matter our circumstances, no matter where we are, it is good to worship you because you are a loving God and actually you're with us in the good and bad times. And thinking about bad times, we just want to commit particularly those um, three families, um, the Tout family at this time uh, with his sudden and unexpected death. Lord, we just really pray that you might uh, embrace the whole family with your loving arms and just be with, it, with each one. Particularly for David and Louise, as uh, uh, they could minister with their, with their faith. Just be with them in a special way. But Lord, just be with the whole family and meet him at this uh, particularly difficult time we do pray. Think as well about Ruth and the passing of her uncle and all the family. Just be with them at this point we do pray as they carry on uh, dealing with the grief and the loss. And so as well for uh, Helen's family with the passing of her dad. Just, just commit each one um, into your hands, Lord, in what is such a difficult time for each. Lord, we also want to pray for the rest of this service that you might challenge us, speak to us and be with us. Um, that your word might touch us and might encourage us and challenge us. And Lord, just want to pray as well for everybody else in the fellowship at uh, their point of need. It might be times of joy right now, time of uh, stress, time of worry, time of anxiety, or simply just an average Sunday, Lord. We're all in different places not only physically but in our mind but you know each one where we are and we pray that you might challenge each one of us our lord pray particularly for those who might not have yet made the time to uh, sit down and listen to you whether it's through this or any other means that you might just challenge each one that we might carry on despite this loss of physical routine that each one of us might keep on wanting to meet with you in this special way on this day your day sunday so Lord, just pray for, each, for all of these things and thank you, Lord, that you're with us once again. Amen. Okay, well, just a couple of notices for the week ahead. A um, few things going on. And first of all, we've got Sunday School, which Louise will have probably shared by now. So if you've got children, clearly this whole service will not be uh, the most uh, entertaining, particularly maybe the sermon. So I uh, encourage you to um, look up that video and uh, see what's there in store for them as there's always something great for the kids. Um, then looking at the week ahead, uh, we're going to carry on with our Bible study on Wednesday on the book of James. Uh, if you've been over the last few weeks, that's great. If you've missed all of them, it really doesn't matter. Uh, just come along, bring your Bible and uh, you know, share your thoughts in this uh, lovely, lovely time together and agree to go through this book of James, which in many ways is very different to a lot of the other um, books in the, Old in the New Testament. Sorry. Then Friday, we've got um, a prayer with, uh, hosted by Louise on Zoom. Obviously, the Bible study is on Zoom as well. You know the links uh, appear on uh, the FB WhatsApp. If you are watching this and you are not on the Fatherless Bound WhatsApp group but would like to attend any of these, just drop one of us a line uh, through whichever way. If, if, if you're watching this, you probably know somebody from the church and the invitation to either the prayer meeting or the Bible study can be sent to you. So um, hopefully you'll want to join one of these. And maybe a bit of an early warning for those whose diary is really full. 
uh, we're very much looking forward to having our Easter Sunday service here at church outdoors, just like we did um, for our Christmas carol service. So Easter Sunday, we will be meeting outdoors for an open air service so we can all get together at least for that Sunday. Um, so let's pray for some good weather, but otherwise let's uh, get ourselves braced up for whatever b the weather brings our way and hopefully we can meet together. Okay, uh, there's nobody here to prompt me, um, well apart from Tim, um, there's nobody else here to prompt me if, I've, if there's any other notices, so I'll assume that there aren't. Um, so let's carry on with our service and sing the next chorus which is uh, Everlasting God. So over to the worship band and let's worship together. Okay, thank you again for the worship band and for that recording. Right, so this morning um, we are going to carry on with our minor prophets, or not minor prophets, but minor characters from the Old Testament. And the one that I've picked for today is Jabez uh, and his prayer. So what we're going to have now is the passage just read via video. And through this video you're going to find how a, a passage read that way can be so inspiring compared to if I just read it to you. So let, let, let's just listen to today's um, reading. And for those of you who want to find it in your Bible, uh, it'll be handy for later. It's 1 Chronicles chapter 4. Um, so over to the video. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Okay, so quite, quite a short passage, isn't it? Um, so 
Yes, we're going to look at this uh, prayer of Jabez. Um, clearly a, a minor character of the Old Testament, so it fits that bill. Um, interestingly enough, the book of Chronicles is not a book that I've spoken uh, probably ever on. Um, you know, it's, it's a book that probably doesn't get very much attention from the average Bible reader, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll consider myself as such. Uh, and actually, if you're reading this chapter 4, you, your mind would just have to drift for a couple of seconds and you would have missed this prayer. Yet, um, there's something fascinating and really inspiring uh, coming from this little known man called Jabez. So who was he? Who was Jabez? Well, his name is only mentioned three times in the Bible and actually only once can you say 100% that it's talking about the man. Um, so, as I've already said, he really qualifies for a minor character for our series. The first time you hear about the reference of Jabez is actually in 1 Chronicles chapter 2. Uh, but actually, it's talking about the town of Jabez. And it says this, And the clans of scribes who lived at Jabez. Uh, we're not going to look at, at that whole passage. Uh, so this town was in Judah and apparently located near Bethlehem. Um, you know, some have inferred that this town will have taken its name from this person, Jabez, uh, from whom we're getting some inspiration for this sermon. But the main part, of course, is uh, what we've just heard, which is the passage in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And just um, to be sure, we're just going to read it again. Uh, just it'll be me now and not this inspiring voice we just heard a few minutes ago. So it's just going to come up on your screen and we're going to read it together. Jabez was more honourable than his brothers. His mother had named, named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. So, without the music and the really cool voice, that is my version of the reading. So the name Jabez means he causes pain. So we can assume that something about his birth was exceptionally more painful than the usual birth, either physically or emotionally, for his mother. I mean, being a man, I'll never know what that feels like, and I've cer but I've certainly witnessed it four times. I know that it looked like a very, uh, it's a mix that felt like running, well, watched like running a marathon whilst clearly suffering a lot of pain. So every woman has suffer suffered um, the pains of birth, but this mother chose to name her child after it. Now, in Bible times, a name was very important. We could say they're important now, but I'm called Paul, I've got Tim here, Wes, Joe, Bob, Jack. You don't really think an awful lot. It's usually is it a fashionable name sometimes. You get these trendy names or not so trendy. Uh, the first time I met another Paul, I was probably about 16. Never have met a single other Paul in my life till then. Then I moved to the UK and I met quite a few, so quite, quite interesting. But um, in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, a name could define a person's future, uh, what they would become. So perhaps Jabez's mother was predicting a baby's future, with, but what, what an awful way to predict your child's future. And actually, looking at just for a few seconds about this business of naming people, uh, Genesis uh, goes on to explain, the book of Genesis goes on to explain the names of many of the Bible's most famous characters. So many sons had father Abraham, uh, says the children's song, as we've uh, learned as children, uh, you know, in Sunday school. And indeed, Abraham's name, an extension of, an extension of his original name, Abraham, means father of many. So he was named as to what he was going to be. You know, God made a, a radical promise to this childless 99-year-old year, man that he would be the father of many nations. God renamed it as that before it happened. This new name embeds God's mighty promise to Abraham into his very identity. Other names are quite as deep, but still relevant. Sarah, and Abraham's firstborn child, is called Isaac, because Sarah says, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. Isaac's child, Esau, is so named simply because his name means hairy, 
the hairy baby. And Esau was indeed hairy. His brother Jacob is so named because Jacob means he grasps the heel, which is a Hebrew idiom for he deceives. In this case, in this case sorry, Jacob really is named for what he will become. And there's many other interesting names um, you know, in the book of Genesis. David means beloved in Hebrew, which is appropriate because he was Israelite's favorite king, albeit a deeply flawed one. Many of the classic names from the Old Testament have God rooted in them. Just look out for the, for the L, E L, uh, which is the Hebrew for God, and you get Daniel, Nathaniel, Samuel, El Aija, El Aisha. Saying them slightly weirdly, but just to emphasize the L, a lot of those prophets had God's name built in their name. So, coming back to Jabez, he was defined for the fact that he causes pain, and his identity would have been defined by that fact. Poor guy. You know, usually the sorrow of bearing, of bearing is afterwards forgotten for joy. You know, once the baby's born, everything's forgotten, and the joy of the child is, um, is, is working well. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so, but, so it's extraordinary that when it comes to being named, um, he, which is after about probably at the time of circumcision, eight days after his birth, um, the mother still chose to remember him by that pain. Now, the record of the genealogy of Judah, uh, just hang on, just a quick second. Sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, my helpful assistant here is giving me some tips. Right. Um, the, so, so coming back to, the, to what we're looking at, uh, so the record of the genealogy of Judah, which is what we read, if you obviously, if you've got your Bible, you'll see that these verses are sandwiched between genealogies, you know, before and after. Um, the, the writer of the book of Chronicles decided that it was important enough to bring these details about Jabez. His relationship with God must have been ex exceptionally noteworthy to cause the author of Chronicles to stop and elaborate on this one man's life. Even if it's just for two verses, it is still there. So who was Jabez? Jabez, um, you know, if we put ourselves back in the original readers, we can learn a lot from uh, the genealogies, like the one in, in which Jabez is mentioned. Jabez is part of that genealogy, just not sprung up right in the middle for no reason. He was in that genealogy, except he deserved a special mention uh, unlike all the people before and after him. You know, the, the writer of Chronicles used this list of name in the text and the purpose for which this book was written to show how God has chosen Israel for a prominent role in history. He wanted to encourage those who had just returned from exile, which is the context of the people of Israel when the book was written, were really struggling with the fact that they were scattered all around, but also some were trying to rebuild their ruined nation. You know, their nation was in ruin, and what God's plan was for them at, the, at some point would have been a mystery. So these names in this genealogy show that God was still accomplishing his purposes through their ancestor before David, Moses, and even Abraham. In fact, God's plan goes all the way back to Adam and clearly is carrying through at that moment in time. Interestingly, actually, the book of Chronicles is very much a repeat, an alternative version of the book of 2 Samuel and 1 Kings. Actually, book of 2 Samuel, which we've been, uh, we have been reading over the last few weeks in, in our daily chapter readings. It's written in a completely different style and with a different perspective, but conveying the same period in Israel's history. Just like the Gospels, we've got four Gospels telling us in a slightly different way, with a slightly different touch, the story of Jesus. So the genealogy here shows that God's purpose was still going on. It was still working its way through despite their current circumstances. You know, the nation of Israel are God's chosen people and they had been given the promised land for a reason. Considering their circumstances at the time when this book was written, the people of Israel needed reminding that God did have a master plan for this nation and in spite of them having been exiled and scattered all around as a nation, that plan was still going to happen and would lead eventually 
that genealogy to Jesus the Messiah. So let's come back to Jabez. Um, as far as we know, he's not a preacher, he's not a prophet, he's not a priest, he's just Mr. Average. There is nothing there that gives us any feeling of any status about this man. But what we find in the next couple of verses is that his attitude is revolutionary. Jabez, how to turn pain into gain. The reason why I've laboured a lot on his name and understanding and this and that and the other is because it really mattered in that context. It's not always so easy for us to really grasp that, but for this guy as an adult, he was, he was burdened by a name that was driving potentially and going to define his whole life. But Jabez, Jabez was honoured because of his relationship with God. That is why he gets a mention. In fact, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 says, Jabez was more honourable than his brothers. So he clearly, in spite of his circumstances, was seen by God as somebody who was following really well and really closely. You know, the Bible has many examples of prayers that teach us to depend on God and call upon him. This is not the only one, there's plenty of others. But Jabez's prayer is in a short few words, a life-challenging prayer. Beyond the first one, when you see, well, sorry, beyond the first prayer, when you see Jesus for the first time. In two verses, Jabez puts crumbs a lot on which we can expand. The prayer of Jabez is very inspiring and challenging for how we approach God with our requests. And just like 2 Timothy uh, tells us, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And this is exactly what we're going to be able to get from this amazing prayer of Jabez. Jabez is not using his prayer as a formula to get something from God. Rather, he's calling upon God to help him ac accomplish the promises of God. So, the first, the first impression when you read these verses can be misleading. We're going to look at it from the way we should really interpret it. So let's dive in and see how this Old Testament prayer can be applied today as we see God's provision and leading in our lives. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, we're going to look at the five key points of what this uh, prayer says. It's not going to be long, I'm going to be short. And then we look at how we can make this prayer in the same five ways relevant to our lives. So, Point number one that's going to be on screen is um, the very first thing Scripture tells us about Jabez is that he cried out to the God of Israel. Jabez states God's lordship and headship over his life. He's calling to God, knowing that God can do anything. So when you pray, do the same. Begin by acknowledging who God is, the reality of God and the acknowledgement of that. The second point is this that you would bless me. That's his first point. Jabez not only recognises God as the one and only true God, he also acknowledges that blessings come from God alone. In our lives, are we chasing promises and blessings that the world tries to entice us with? You know, are we striving towards prosperity from our own strength? When we pray, Let's do it with a heart fully invested in the blessings of God and seeking our blessings through him. The third point is that you would multiply my territory. That you would multiply my territory. Again, from the first instance, we could misread what Jabez is asking for. You know, it's easy to think that Jabez is simply referring to physical land when asking to multiply territory. He's just, look, give me lots of land, lots of property, which clearly again in those days would have been a sign of wealth, power, etc. However, if we look at the lineage of Jabez, we can understand that he's not merely speaking in terms of wealth and prosperity, but in terms of impacting the kingdom of God, enlarging God's territory, God's kingdom in his life. He wanted his spiritual territory to increase, to claim generations for the Lord of Israel. And the same for us. Let's ask ourselves the questions. Do we need to claim or reclaim some of the land in our lives 
that has been taken away from God, that we're no longer letting God into? Do we need God to reclaim that territory in our lives? So when we pray, let's ask God to multiply our territory and that he might do more through us in those territories. Fourth point, your hand be with me. That's Jabez's next thought. Jabez wanted God to be in every moment of his day. He understood the power of God's hand to protect and to lead in the right direction. Blessings will become curses if it's not God's hand providing and guiding. When you pray, request more than blessings and provision, but that God's hand would lead, would lead you through any circumstances and trials that come your way. That is the greatest blessing. And a final point that Jabez makes um, in his prayer is this, keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. The name Jabez literally means born with pain. His own mother named him this because of the pain she endured during labour, or that's the only inference we can safely make. And when Jabez prays, he speaks against the testimony of his name and lets go of the shame it covers him in. So when you pray, come to God vulnerable and ready for him to turn your weaknesses into his glory. When we learn to submit our will to God and pray like Jabez, we will begin to see more God, more, so, sorry, to see God move in mighty ways. So those are the five points in Jabez's prayer and there's so much in it and there's so much I'm sure each one of us will be touched or will feel that one of those prayer, prayer points is relevant to us. So there's the question, what about you? What about me? Do you want God's plan in your life? You know, God has a distinct purpose for yourself and for me. Let's make sure you recommit and I recommit to him and through him we can overcome all those life-limiting restrictions that are in our lives and that might hinder us from f fulfilling God's purpose in our lives, you know, from doing what God has fully planned for us to do through us. And here, here's some questions. Do you find your name carries a reputation that you feel bound with? I don't so much mean, like me, Paul, do you feel when people think of your name, what do they associate with you? And do you feel bound by that, maybe because of the things from the past? And do you feel trapped because of things in your past that you feel still stop you now from moving forwards because you are still seen as X being the person who's like Y. You know, let's make sure that Y just no longer bounds us. We can be anything from A to Z. You know, do your physical ailments restrict you to be able to do anything for God's purposes? Do you recognize that you have drifted away from following God's plan for you in part or in all of your life? Hopefully, if you're watching this video today, not all of this applies to you because you've, you've made the time to, to spend time with God. But where, which part, which draw in the multiple drawers of your life, in different aspects of your life, may, do you feel you need to reopen to God that at the moment you've shut God out from? So if any of these questions I've just asked speaks to you, then Jabez's prayer is for you. It certainly touches me and challenges me, and I hope it does you too. So what I propose we do now is I'm going to paraphrase Jabez's prayer for our times and hopefully relevant to today for us and to try and make it personal to us. So I'm going to essentially read out five prayers that cover the five points we've just gone through. And if you feel like it, join me in that prayer if you want to make it your own. But these are what... Jabez has been trying to say in his time and hopefully we can say in our time. So they're going to appear on the screen. You're going to have, we're literally going to have five slides which say five prayer. Feel free to just, just look and, and read them 
or if you feel compelled to, if God's Spirit is touching you this morning, then make it your own prayer for today and the days and weeks to come. So the first part is back to this, and this should be in every prayer, no matter what, this call to God in our prayers. So I'm going to read it. You are powerful and mighty and have called us to be set apart, holy for you. Your holiness not only stretches over evil, but also leads us in knowledge, justice, mercy, goodness and love. Lord, your commands reveal your character and we praise you today and ask that you cleanse us and remake us into the image of your Son through the power of your Spirit. End of first prayer. The second one, that you would bless me, what Jabez said, but let's do, we're going to pray this with the words that Jabez meant. Now, the, the, the slide is just going to have the first part. I've got a little bit more that I'll read to you here. Dear God, thank you for your great love and blessing over our lives. Thank you that your favour has no end, but it lasts for our entire lifetime. Forgive us for sometimes forgetting that you know all of our ways, that you know what concerns us, and you cover us as with a shield. We ask for your guidance so that we might walk fully in your blessing and goodness today. We ask that you face, sorry, we ask that your face would shine on us, that you would open the right doors for our lives and for our loved ones, and that you would close the wrong doors and protect us from those we need to walk away from. Establish the work of your hands and bring to fulfillment all that you have given us to do in these days. We pray that you would make our way purposeful and our footsteps firm out of your goodness and love. Give us a heart of wisdom to hear your voice and make us strong by your huge favour and grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. That is our second prayer. Third one is this. Enlarge my territory. God, would you begin today enlarging my territory in all areas of life to claim it for your glory? Expand my borders and use my life to bring you honour and fame. Enlarge my influence in my workplace, my community, my home. May I bring you praise for all that you have done. Give me a deeper love for the lost and the broken of this world and grant me access to be used mightily for you. Our fourth prayer is this. Your hand be with me. Thank you that you have set us free and that you are bigger than anything we face in this life. We lay our burdens before you, every single one, for we know they're much safer in your hands than our own. God, may your hand guide me as I walk with you each step of the way. Help me to trust in your righteous right hand that strengthens and upholds me. Father God, lead me into the territory that you would have me claim for your righteousness. Amen. The final words of Jabez's prayer are this, keep me from harm. And here's our final prayer uh, to pray Jabez as Jabez did. Father God, we praise you for your love and faithfulness towards your children. We praise you for being a perfect, holy, trustworthy God that is bigger than all the evil we experience here on earth. We ask that you give us eyes to see when evil is before us, hearts to hate evil and the desire to flee from its presence. We ask that you would not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil and draw us close to yourself. So there we are. That's the end of Jabez's prayer. Absolutely loads to encourage us, challenge us, and hopefully to inspire us forward. I did not write these, these words of prayer. I, I found them, uh, but I found them really inspiring. And I felt that it really encapsulated well what Jabez was put in the Bible for, for the, for the thoughts and a desire he had. Desire to overcome 
to do God's will no matter what, but to commit himself to God. And as we see at the end of that passage from, um, that it says that God granted him his prayer. And God will do the same with us today. So I'm going to come to a close. Um, and, and, and really the conclusions are just this. You know, what is in your name? What is, what is your reputation? God can give you a new name today, whatever the baggage you carry with you. He can help you turn pain into gain if you reach out to him, as Jabez did. And the final point is this. God can enlarge your boundaries. And you, you could read Ephesians chapter 3. But first, you must acknowledge your need for him. And then submit your life to him by following his son Jesus. Believing, repenting, confessing, baptism and a new life. Jabez, Jabez is like a shining star in this long list of anonymous characters. It is significant that what Jabez is remembered for is not some outstanding achievement, but a prayer. But what a prayer. He did not win a great battle or erect a great building. He simply prayed a prayer. But out of all the people in this nine-chapter list of characters, he alone is lifted out because of the prayer that he prayed. What an achievement. What a man. And I hope this prayer will challenge you to turn to God for all hope and inspire you to unshackle yourself from all those things that seem unsurmountable in your life. But just turn to God for help and just like with Jabez, he will answer. So there we are, Jabez. It is a famous prayer, all the ones which I have not really pointed to very often. So a fresh challenge. If you've heard this prayer many times before, hopefully you'll be refreshed. And if you haven't, maybe this is a new and a fresh challenge and inspiration, inspiration for the week ahead. So we're now just going to, um, as we're nearing the end of our service, we're just going to sing one more chorus, which is uh, My Heart is Full. So over to the worship group for this chorus.
Thank you to the worship band again. Hopefully you've enjoyed this morning. I thank you very much for joining and being with us. And as we finish, from your own home, would you join me by just saying the grace? It's not going to be on the screen. The words are not going to be there. So if you don't know the words, don't worry. But if you do, please, please just join me. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Well, I wish you a lovely end of Sunday. It's grey, but it's not raining. Chance to go out. So have a lovely and blessed end of the day and we'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.